Hey guys, Max Convexity. How's everyone doing today? Let's check out these yield max stocks, especially the ones with the uncapped upside. And also I'm going to look at a few viewer uh, emails and we'll look at the market. The market's turning around right now, so it, which is good. A little while ago it was selling off when I was doing the defiance report, but All right, we'll start with the old single stock buffer report. We'll look at some charts in a second. Okay, single stock buffer report. From left to right, on the left side, we have the, the ETFs that have the call spread strategy on right now. So these are the ones that should have more upside, but also they should probably get more downside. Um, but they're the first right up here to AI. Then also PayPal was inadvertently left off, but they have a call spread on. You can see they're down almost as much as the underlying, but only about half as much. So let, let's see what's really, let's see if anything's really standing out on the bad side. I mean, it would have to be snow for sure. Snow's catching or snowy's catching about 90% of the downside of the parent asset. So not great, right? Not ideal, suboptimal. Uh, Moderna, M-R-N-Y, is catching about 80% of the downside. Now, these are one of the guys that have the call spread on, so they would have done better had this been a bullish market for Moderna, but evidently Moderna's turned around. Now, Apple and Coinbase have been up, and looks like they still are today. We have another way of looking at this. This was as of a couple of days ago. These were the call spreads that were open a couple of days ago. So we had AI, AM or AMD, so AMDY, AMZ had one open. So let's look at the AMZ one. They had the 187.50 sold and the 192.50 long. So we can actually look at that here. This is the trade, and this is the profit and loss graph. They're in a pretty good spot right here. They're in a, a spot where they're going to make uh, about $160 per contract. Okay. <clears throat> Here's the profit and loss graph over time. When they put this trade on, their price was down here around 187 or so, if I remember Price has gone up, a little, or maybe even lower than that. Price has gone up and time has gone by. They're going to realize a profit on this trade. And if the market would turn around and go up or keep going up, it's turned around right now. It's possible they could, you know, probably not likely, but it's possible they could even have more profit than $151 per trade. Okay. So we have, we also have the Apple trade in here. They're up about $3.2 million. I did this one on the entire size of the position, but I had to guess a little bit because I haven't been following Apple for a while, but these guys are, this trade's worked out pretty damn well for these guys. The price of Apple was down here when they put this on. So this is an example of what happens when these trades go right. Okay. Now let's look over here at MRNA. This one's down about a million. And it's your standard. It's your standard what they say about cover calls. Well, they, they have capped upside and they get all the downside, or which isn't really true, but they get the vast majority of the downside, right? So this is the vast majority of the downside. This is what these guys are experiencing today. So um the call spread doesn't fix this problem. And in fact, the call spread makes this problem worse. And it's something that people haven't spoken about yet. See, when you when you sell a call spread instead of a call, you take in less yield. Well, the yield is what protects the downside. So you even have less downside protection. But some people say, probably say, hell, these things don't have that much in the first place. What's well, a little bit less protection? It, it is true. They get the vast majority of the downside. So... That is one of the things about covered calls, but at least they've solved the problem of they don't get none of the upside anymore. The none of the upside, or, or it's not really none, but the look, the very few of the upside was a, was a killer also. 
But anyway, and here's here's the problem with the standard covered call. No matter how high it goes, they're just going to make the same quarter million. It wouldn't matter if it went to a million. When you do a call spread, it solves that problem. But both strategies, this way or the call spread, here's a J.P. Morgan way. Now, J.P. Morgan is another example of what happens when these things go right. J.P. Morgan bought the 205 strike call, so it means they're on capped above 205. Well, the market's trading at 210 right now for J.P.M. You know, I even I put the call spread right here in green, but they're above max profit. So great job. Great job. So we only have two of them above the taking advantage of the of the spread right now, JPM and Apple. We've looked at both of those. Some of the other ones are actually you you could actually have to say Google is getting hurt and I can show it to you. Google sold this option right here, uh, the 157 and a half for two dollars and 30 cents. OK, the old days, they would have just sold that option and been totally capped. OK, but they would have brought in 230. Nowadays, in the, because they put on a spread, they bought an option behind it. They spent about half of what they took it in for. So instead of making two bucks, they made about a buck, right? But now they have uncapped upside. Great, unless the market drops. So what happened to Google? Well, Google's down freaking, well, I was looking at Coin, Coinbase down 11%, but even Google. Google's down 1%. Okay, well, <clears throat> It's great if Google's up because it's uncapped, but if it's down, you actually make a little less because when it's down, the income is is the only thing you make. And so when you're voluntarily taking in less income off the front side, doing a call spread, even though I think it's a great idea, it's not the be all and end all. You know, it comes down to, do you know if the market's going up or down? If you know the market's going up next week, do a call spread or just do nothing. But if you have to do something, do a call spread. Then if you know the market's going down, sell a, sell a call. Don't sell a spread. Take in all the money you can. Thing is, we never know which way it's going. So you just kind of got to figure out your strategy. But I'm glad there's a whole community of people to talk about it with. All right. Speaking of a community to talk about it with, I've been trying to pick Round Hill dividends. And I've been having a tough time because I really haven't tried that hard. Um, Round Hill... They, but I got a call from a subscriber and he has been in contact with the Round Hill people. And he tells me they, this dividend was for two weeks ago, which was what I kind of suspected because I saw it on Reddit. But anyway, I, it, it, that is confirmed. They, they pay a week behind. So, you know, this week they pay for last week, but last week was actually from the week before that. Because, but anyway, um, so that's good to know. So I think in the future, the Round Hill guesses will be will be closer. So here was the last round hill dividend, 20 cents. I guess 35 cents. I didn't think it'd be 45 like the time before, but I thought it'd be 35. Now that I know they're two weeks behind, we just have to look at, uh, we just have to look at, no, not that. Yeah, we just have to look at this. Okay, here's a five day rolling average of the morning volatility. That's what round hill sells is they sell volatility in the morning. So here's the one day VIX. So this, this is, I'm trying to figure out a way to do without actually following the option trade. So following the one day VIX and knowing that they're paying two weeks behind anymore, the five day moving average doesn't work. I need to look at the five day moving average probably five days ago or maybe even 10 days ago because my subscribers said they paid two weeks behind, which they're Anyway, the rolling average right now is 13, but if you go back a couple of weeks, it's only 12. If you go back further than that, it's 10. Volatility was super compressed back around the end of August, single day volatility, but it's popped, it's reared its ugly head back up now. So I'm still saying, even knowing they paid two behind, I'm still going to say, and I'll put it down right. I usually put the guess in this column. My guess is 32 cents right now. I may modify that every day, but um, <clears throat> all right. So let's see what else we have to look at. Let's see what else we have to look at. 
All right. So the other stocks in the yield max universe, uh, this is just some of the normie stocks that just have the full calls on. And, you know, look at MSTY getting all the upside and they just have a normal call on. So it, it just because you have a just because you're fully capped doesn't mean you can't get some upside. Just because you're uncapped doesn't mean it's in every case it's the best uh, it's the best alternative. I, so even though I'm the kind of guy that just says uncap all of them because you never know. <laughs> but Jay is going to do it on a case by case basis. So we'll keep following here which ones are uncapped. Uh, next week they'll have a whole new batch of uncapped of uncapped options. Here are the indexes. If anyone's concerned about those, we look at Spy T taking it on the chin today. And I spy YMAX, GPIQ, all the normally high powered ones, which are all the ones I just mentioned, are taking it on the chin today. That's kind of the way it works. Um, all right, what else do we have to talk about? Uh, all right, well, let's do this. Let's look at some charts and let's talk about a viewer uh, a viewer email. Okay, so first let's look at a chart of uh, the spy. The spy is recovering nicely. SPX is recovering nicely, which is that's good for defiance, but it's also good if you own Round Hill or any of the other funds to sell daily options. They're all doing variations of the same thing. So you all want prices on all of those strategies. You want prices steady to higher. So this is good news. Now we'll see if they sustain it. We shall see if they should sustain it. Look at NASDAQ. It's recovered. It's about right to the bottom line right now. So it looks like it's about a break even. And Russell, Russell is still a little shy of theirs. Russell looks like it would be a loss. Um, yeah, okay, Tom, uh, so I was going to react to some viewer comments. Tom said, I think the VIX chart was incorrect this morning. It's totally different than the last three days and much higher, plus I uh, really – Plus, it is really the daily change in the slope that affects the daily price. Yes, evidently, if not the slope. Yeah, I agree 100 percent. OK, I'd have to go back and watch that. I was looking at it. Let's look at it now. I think what Tom's talking about, and it probably was this morning, uh, especially Vivix quotes. Vivix quotes are delayed and was probably showing yesterday. I'm, I should have checked that. It was probably showing yesterday's data. Tom caught it. His eyes sharp. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, yesterday, yesterday morning at 8 30, uh, my volatility model switched bullish and the spy was around. We can see it right here. The spy was around 570 and it rallied a little bit, but anyway, it sold off today. So we'll see what happens. The last time it went bullish, you can see it was a good couple of days for the spy. Last time I went bearish, that that didn't work out. That signal didn't work out. These are just one of many things to look at. And but the reason Thomas reacting to volatility, what these what these react to, is these are informed by uh, by stuff that goes on up here. All right, and. I, I look at this one and I look at that's VIX cash and I look at VIX futures. But and it's it's lower just like it should be. But I also look at something called VIVIX, which is the VIX of VIX. But this one is super delayed. And I bet you I had yesterday's data up there or something. Anyway, I, I apologize for that. But right now, all three of any way you look at volatility in the 30 minute time frame frame, they're selling the shit out of it. So and they have been since yesterday morning, and that's why the market's rallying. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to keep selling it. Doesn't mean the market's going to keep rallying. This is just a trend following risk on risk off system. And it catches uh, lots of times it will catch where it really comes in handy is when it switches from uh, bullish to bearish. Um, sometimes it'll do that before other indicators would, because this is a little bit forward looking and it's something novel that I like to look at. 
lots of times when it switches the other way, uh, when it switches back from bearish back to bullish, it's super late. And it's, you know, this is based on basically on moving averages. A lot of it is, which is backwards looking, not forwards looking. But how, but there is a couple of things that it looks at that are, uh, that are unique. Anyway, all right. So, uh, but right now that's positive for, for whatever. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see if it stays positive by the end of the day. But if this works, if, if this is, as good of a metric as I think it should is, it the market should close at least here or higher on its highs or whatever. It should be bullish. This this morning sell off should look like a fake out by the end of the day. Now we'll see if that we'll see if that bears out or if the if the indicator switches directions again. You never know. All right. I mean it can it can do either, but uh boy back here when it went to bullish, if if you get it like it did did back here. When it went to bullish, boy, the spy went all the way, you know, from 530 up here to 556 before it switched. So it can catch some really good trending type things. That's what it's designed to do. And the way it caught that is because people started selling the shit out of volatility, just selling it as fast as they could. And and I, I even caught that this went from red to green before before this crossed the 200 day, which would be a conventional way to it'd be a conventional way to measure a, a change in leadership. So it, it, this was about a day early because the volatility few traders are, uh, are, are forward or more forward looking in my opinion, than, than stock traders or better informed or whatever. All right. So that's the lesson on that today. So we've checked out, uh, we've checked out everything in the yield max universe today. Uh, Roundhill dividend is going to be 32 cents next week. We'll see. Here's one more look at this. Look, uh, look, OARC looks really good compared to its parent asset. If you look at some standouts on the upside, GDXY. Somebody asked me in the comments, and um, somebody asked me, would I take GDXY or... It was another comment that I meant to react to. They said out of group two, would you take, there it is right there, William, thank you. Would you pick NDVY or GDXY? And, and well, I, boy, uh, I don't know. It's a good, I hadn't even thought about that. Um, I could make a case for either one. So the case I would make for NVDY is it's tied to NVIDIA and I'm long-term bullish on the stock market and especially NVIDIA, it's a great company. So that I think that's good. The thing that makes it good is also the thing that maybe makes it weak, but it's tied to a really high beta stock name that should just kill it during the good time. So, I mean, that's NVIDIA for sure. I mean, NVDY, you know, it's hard to, hard to argue against it now. I mean, of course we could have a, we could have a crash in the market and, and, you know, uh, we, but anyway, and that would certainly hurt that fund. Now GDXY, because it's tied to gold mining, it has a different dynamic. It's not as directly tied to the market. So what do I mean by that? So let's look at, uh, let's look at a correlation matrix really quick. I think you guys will like this. Now let's compare, um, let's compare SPY with uh, GDX. Um, uh, with just some other funds, JPY. Um, Let's do this one also. Uh, I threw USOY in there also to get another commodity-based kind of quasi-commodity focused, or it is commodity-focused fund. So <clears throat> let's also throw in TLTW, and I'll show you. Okay. So let's look here. Okay, of course, the, the correlation to SPY is one. So GDX is a negative 99, perfectly inversely correlated. I, I didn't know that. Uh, anyway, okay, that's good to know, though. So if, if you're bearish, definitely, definitely, uh, definitely this one. 
I, I didn't know it was perfectly inversely correlated. In fact, I almost don't believe it. That, so the problem is they're only looking at June through August because of USOY's return. Let's take USOY out of here. I think we're getting bad data. Okay, well, GDX is is a good diversifier. It's not very correlated at all. It's just a nine. So it it's basically uncorrelated. So I would say GDX for diversity, GDXY for diversification sake, because its underlying is tied to something that's not correlated, not correlated to the, you know, so if you're worried about diversification, if you already have a jillion of these funds, if you already have all the, you know, if you already have all the high powered ones like uh, Jep Q and, and Valley and GPIQ and stuff, then I would say GDXY. Now, if you don't have any of those kinds of funds yet, I mean, it would be, ten, I would say NVDY because I just, it's hard to, it's hard to argue against the growth story of the, you know, American stock market, especially tech based, you know, especially in, unless, unless we have a, uh, unless we have a major pullback, which I have been calling for. So, I mean, I don't know, but I'll, but at the same time, I believe you can't predict it. So, you know, I don't know. Uh, that's up to you. Maybe get, maybe get some of each, get half of each. That's always what I say. Um, but uh, what else I was going to show is TLTW is if you anything that's less correlated, the lower the correlation number is, the stronger it is for diversification sake. If we had USOI on there, it would be really high also. Let's put it back on there. Or let's put USO on there. Did I put USOI? That's what I did. I put US. Okay. So USO is, is a great diversifier also. So it just depends what you're going for. Is, do you think diversity is our strength? If that's what you're going for, GDXY, USOY, something like that. I know it doesn't pay in that week. So GDXY. But if you're going for just more upside, more more money, more, you know, just going just going for it, uh, NVDY. So that's my pick. All right, guys. Hope that helps. Hope I answered that question, Tom. I'm sorry if that chart, if the, I'm not Tom. I'm sorry to anybody if the, the VIX chart was screwed up this morning. It probably was, and the slope was bass backwards or something. I'll check that, or I'll quit showing it in the morning, or I'll uh, I'll, I'll fix the problem. I, I appreciate you guys for looking. But I just checked now, and it, even though it's delayed, it's delayed 10 minutes, and there's no major changes in the last 10 minutes. I think the most recent charts that I showed you just now are representative of where it's really at. All right, guys. I appreciate you all. Have a good one.